The COVID-19 pandemic for some proposed an opportunity to reflect on the past. Artist Nathneet Hetty spent 300 days of the pandemic drawing and reminiscing of places she traveled to across 37 feet of a toilet paper roll. Joining me now to speak of this work is Nethmi Hetty. Nethni, what inspired this project? It's so outside of the box and so relatable. So I actually used to draw on napkins um, for like the past 10 years actually. And um, basically what happened was uh, when the pandemic started, I was stuck in Australia and I ended up having this toilet paper roll that I was like eyeing and I thought to myself, I'm going to take this with me because A, there was a, you know, toilet paper shortage at the time and everyone was like just, you know, hoarding it. So I took a roll with me and I brought it to Canada and that was kind of like what I quarantined with. So this thing ended up becoming my art project um, very seamlessly. Like I didn't have any anything to draw on like no, no, not a canvas i didn't have a notepad like nothing so i just had my pens and then i was like this this toilet paper is gonna be my canvas and that's kind of how it started the, this project must have taken a lot of confidence the toilet paper is so fine were you ever scared that this piece could be tainted due to the delicate nature um Yes, like, you know, you have to be super gentle with how you hold it, how you, how the pen interacts with the surface of it. I wouldn't let anyone in my house come near it because, you know, you can just, if a, if a drop of coffee just spills on it, yes. it's going to spread and stuff. So I was like really OCD about who and what interacted with it. Uh, there were, there are like a few areas if you really look closely where like there is almost like a tear at the bottom and that was me doing it on purpose because after 300 days of drawing you get so annoyed with spending so much time with your own piece of art that I was like so frustrated in some moments I'm like I'm just what if I what, what would happen if I just tear it and I did like a couple of times just from the madness of spending so much time with this toilet paper roll but other than that yeah you just have to be super gentle with it Again, with the delicate nature, uh, you must have been pretty worried about what kind of tools that you used. Uh, which tools did you decide to use and why? I just used a basic micron pen that has a really small fine tip. Um, and I found that it was just it, the, the texture of toilet paper actually has a wave on it. So it's very absorbent, but not in a way that you see anything spreading or splotching. So I felt that uh, the ink kind of worked really well with what I had um, and just you know making sure that my style is kind of scribbly stippling kind of um, line art it's not so much clean uh, cut and you know there's just a lot of even if there is a mistake you can't really see it just because I fill in a lot of it with a mic you know very tiny scribbles so it just kind of worked out so that when you look from far it still shows the cityscape but I think the main thing was making sure because this is one continuous roll that I didn't actually tear one of the, cause you know, every there's yes, tiles the in the toilet yeah. paper. So just like ripping from the middle was probably the scariest thing. Uh, cause you know, if it breaks then it's not as cool anymore. But I know the very first tile that I ever drew, that one's hanging by a thread currently. <laughs> you got more, uh, maybe closer to the middle or closer to the end of this toilet paper roll. Were you rolling it from the other side just to preserve it? Or was it kind of spread out? across the room? Um, I actually ended up folding. So as I would go, I would have half of it fold over and then the other half would be um, kind of spread out so I can just focus on one tile each because otherwise it gets a bit intimidating too. Sometimes, you know, you don't know how long there is left either. So I would like roll it out completely to see how many feet are still, you know, waiting for me to draw on. It would be like, 20 feet left. I'm like, oh great, uh, that'll just take 200 more days. That's fine. <laughs> At what point did you kind of get exhausted with this and you're like, oh my gosh, how much is left? Um, do you know which day? Is, was it closer to the 100th day, the 200th day? Well, I think just living through a pandemic kind of helped create this piece, to be honest, because I'm usually running around a lot. I have 
you know, a pretty, I don't know, I feel like I travel a lot and stuff. So this really full, made me force myself into staying in one place and just dedicating myself to draw, which wouldn't usually be the case because I would just be super distracted with other things. So um, I think by day, you know, 250 or something, I was probably getting pretty annoyed with the fact that this is my social life. <laughs> it's just, you know, the, the spending evenings drawing um but i i'm honestly very grateful for the for the stillness that um you know quarantine and in a way the lockdown brought as well just because you you're just able to focus on a lot of things that you just wouldn't have the time and patience to do otherwise now a toilet paper roll is not um the first um thought that it would probably come to my mind after you said i used to scribble on napkins uh, have there been any other um objects that you've scribbled on uh, maybe a banana some fruit uh yeah <laughs> you can't leave any fruit lying around <laughs> like it's going to be drawn on actually i'm yeah, drawn on a banana it's really fun actually um i what i have noticed is that i have a serious aversion to paper like I don't seem to like drawing on a traditional sketchbook anymore so um, there there's just fun in finding texture in just everyday things that we use you know that you don't really think too much about but they can actually be surfaces and I think there's also something beautiful in um, drawing in things that are a bit impermanent or things that you know you just kind of know it's very fragile and it could fall apart any minute like a banana, it can rot in a day, but you know that piece of art is just gonna stay there for that one day and it's gonna, you know, you just appreciate it for the time that it's there. What kind of attention have you received? What's been the feedback? It's been overwhelming. It's been so nice. Like I put this out last week and I've just gotten so many just, you know, direct messages from people being like, this is like, did you do this? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I think so um and just uh, so much support because i would post on instagram stories my process and you know behind the scenes and stuff and people have been following along with me uh which i'm just so grateful for in your work there's a lot of gothic and futuristic architecture are these all from memory and how much is purely imagined the print looks very very full and layered well, it's actually from my travels throughout Europe. So I did a backpacking trip in 2017 and um, I actually tried, you know, everyone that is 21 years old and goes to Europe decides to go to every possible country <laughs> that they can tick off. So um, I ended up just going to a lot of places and, you know, just reminiscing about some of my travels is kind of what fueled a lot of the art that's showcased on the toilet paper. So uh, there, there's a lot of places that I have been to and also a lot of places where in Europe I wish I went as well. So, you know, it, it basically ha it has a bit of a personal touch uh, as to, you know, memories I've had in places and stuff like that. Uh, but there's actually in the landscapes, you'll see there's a mixture of architecture and also natural landscapes just to kind of create a very holistic view of what my travels to Europe felt like. It wasn't always cityscapes. There was a lot of, you know, lakes and ocean views and just so much beautiful architecture as well. So everything kind of threads together to create this panoramic canvas. So was there any planning as you were going tile to tile or uh, were you just scribbling away? Scribbling away. I of course had reference photos just because I'm not um, at all, I don't have a very good memory. I wish, I wish I drew this thing by memory, <laughs> but no, I had to use a lot of reference photos for, you know, composition and structure. Are there any similar projects that you've begun or is this an artist's secret? in terms of like something similar to the toilet paper roll? Yes, yes. I feel like I always have, you know, a side hustle going on and none of them ever relate to each other. Uh, this one feels like it took a long time and it's a, it, it feels like I would like to eventually work on something similar to this again, but this is one of maybe many or maybe it's the only one I ever create. I don't, I don't think I'm very sure about where that's gonna go, but 
I, I do know that I don't want to touch a pen or a toilet paper roll <laughs> to draw on for the next a few months or so I do need a break but then who knows maybe there's a second one coming on <laughs> are there any places still on your bucket list to go um, I know that you mentioned a few places that you visited uh, can you name all the places that are um, I guess on display on the toilet paper roll and um, some places that you'd want to go to in the future well I think so you have a bit of uh, Western Europe Eastern Europe, there's the Mediterranean. I have Morocco in there as well, because that was just another country that, you know, it's also very close to Spain. So I ended up going there and it's also featured in my toilet paper. Um, I think Spain is probably the most featured country in the toilet paper roll, just because I was obsessed with being there. And same with Italy. So I, there's a lot of um, anyone that, you know, takes a look at this hopefully in the escape role instagram account or maybe one day in a gallery we'll notice that uh there there's a lot of places that are very you know touristy and then there's also places where you would be like oh it's in, this isn't here and it's just more of an off the beaten path kind of place do you have a favorite tile <laughs> i think i do and i think it's the sagrada familia um for in barcelona i think that took quite a long time to do because I wanted to make sure the proportions were right. And, you know, Gaudi's style is very much scribbles in real life, in a sense. And uh, he does a lot of biomimicry. So it took a while for me to just make sure that, you know, I didn't make any mistakes because, of course, if you do, it's really hard to fix it. Now, I know that you're mentioning it took a long time to do uh, that tile. Do you know how long or like the average time per tile? two to three hours per tile, I would say. Wow, okay, that is a yeah. lot. <laughs> are, are there any artists who inspired your work? Um, I mean, I feel like a lot of the inspiration for me comes from artists I follow on Instagram. No one in particular, but just there's so many talented people that are online posting on, you know, these art feeds and stuff. So I follow a bunch of them and I'm constantly shocked by the amount of talent that's there. But uh, yeah, in particular, there's no one that really inspired this particular style because I have always drawn this way. Well, it looks so beautiful. Thank you, Nethmi, for joining us today. It was a pleasure. Thank you. And thank you for all of you at home for tuning in. This is Inbox with Julia Cosby on Tag TV. Last year, I was quarantining in my room and I had to find something to do to kill the 14 days. I was kind of limited on resources and what I did have was a roll of toilet paper, so I decided that that's what I was going to use as my canvas. I was using one of these Micron pens and they're like super fine tip markers, so um, you have to make sure that, you know, it's got kind of like a needle texture. So you have to be very gentle with how the tip interacts with the actual um, surface of the toilet paper. This specific toilet paper roll had this waviness to it. So I could just scribble on it and create these very small details. And when you look from far, it starts to create like the macro image. You can see that there's a finish line, like a very real finish line, unlike drawing on a sketchbook, unlike painting on a canvas, like it's almost like you're drawing on the timeline. Sometimes it was meditation, sometimes it was like my therapy, and sometimes I just wanted to set it on fire. I think I'm gonna always come back to projects like this where I just sit and like cut the world out of my mind and it's just like me and something like the toilet paper roll where I just dedicate all the things that I have seen and experienced into an output and just see that this is just an everyday household item and it just um, became something else. My name is Nedmi Hetzi and thank you for watching this video. I hope you get to, you know, ah, uh, 